Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. Words can't describe how excited I am for this series. But they're all I have, so let me introduce to you in the bottom right of Neo Humanity, the final boss, the Blue Zerg. It's dark. And one of the most entertaining tactical Terrans in all of StarCraft 2 today. It is Gumiho, the last mech. Terran. Not so much because he's the only one who plays mech, but he's the only one who really makes it look good. I'm expecting to see some here today, but first he's going to have to figure out how to defend. Six Zerglings rushed right out of the base from Dark. Slaps the wall down in its face, in the face of the Zerglings, just like I'm going to have to ask you to slap that like button. Uh, and subscribe if you haven't made it there yet. Yes, the Zerglings get through one of the depots, but the SCVs, I believe, only lost one so far. Gets a second one before it's all said and done. But yeah, Gumiho versus Dark. This is from Morty's Korean Royale, a bloodthirsty event with many of the top tier players. Uh, and. No, I think also including Scarlet and Special. I'm looking forward to some of their games because they are, I believe, staying in Korea at the moment. But Dark with just that early pull. A lot of Terrans have been opting for the Command Center first recently. To Honestly, the Command Center first is a bit more defensible against that early Zergling play because the Command Center was already done by the time the Zerglings came across the map. And uh, while he didn't have any units quite ready by the time the Zerglings got in, Dark does slow down his third, though he takes it uh, past those golden minerals. The golden mineral is pretty much only there for dramatic effect. Uh, it only takes two trips either way. I guess you get technically slightly more than if they were blue minerals. And it, I, I guess the aesthetic value the um, emotional value of units and resources is important. Dark is a play. Oh, never. <clears throat> a moment. You know Dark. And you know Gumiho. Which is why you probably won't be surprised to see me introduce Gumiho in here in game one. Building. A fusion core! Battle cruisers are the order of the day. Trying to battle back the Zerg yet again. Gumiho, the player who will bring them out in the first game. He knows how good they are, and he's beaten Dark with them before. So I'm looking forward to yet another round of Gumiho's big battle cruiser energy. And Dark, we'll see if he finally finds the counter. As, uh, honestly, Dark has has really struggled. Well, he's struggling to deal with four Hellions dropped into his base. This is a clever move from Gumio. Gets seven drone kills and may even get out with the, uh, with the medevac there. Does for now. And this is actually like Clem has been doing it. Gumiho, obviously, with Metal Cruisers. I haven't seen Gumiho break out the build directly like this quick, straight into Metal Cruiser with triple factory behind. Dark has shown some weakness. One of the few things, the laser bathtubs that they are. The floating laser bathtubs. That's how dramatic. The Metal Cruiser jumps. Oh, he jumps behind. Out of vision. Of course, the battle cruiser doesn't need vision because um, space magic. The queens will react. We're already a couple drones down, and the queens really lamenting their lack of flying ability here. To chase down the battle cruiser, will throw their knitting needles up at it, uh, trying to create a puncture, but more barely scratching the paint. Ten drones down so far. This battle cruiser cruising and bruising. 11 drums and we'll be able to work on some of the creep yes the battle cruiser does cost more than a command center 
400 minerals, 300 gas, nothing to scoff at. But there is no direct counter for Zerg. Uh, at least in the early game. This has prompted some very dramatic plays out of Dark in the past. I'm excited to find out what he's going to come up with here. It's like, I, I'm going to walk across with four roaches and do a weird amount of damage. Make that six roaches. Seven, eight roaches. And uh, in typical dark fashion, those roaches will... Uh, they're killing almost as many SCVs. They may end up killing more SCVs than he lost drones to the battle cruiser. But it's a second cruiser on the way. Is there Yamato Kim? Unfortunately, uh, he, he doesn't go... In fact, there's no upgrades right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I didn't believe. But the Yamato Cannon... Oh, wait. Was it for the benefit of the Overseer? Hmm. Is it a fake? Honestly, with two battle cruisers, I do feel it's worth it. Nidus Network on the way. As, uh... Dark is trying alternative strategies to match the tactical jumps of the battlecruiser. Swarm? Wait, when did he get an infestation pit? I was obviously, um, a bit distracted with all the drama. So, Swarm Host, I imagine there will be some queens involved. Swarm Host Nidus versus Battlecruiser Yamato. Bunch of tanks on the field. Dark did see the switch into the mass tank style. 16 swarm house. Wow. Okay. Um. Well, away we go. Blue flame on the way. Already shaping up to be quite a dramatic experience here. Dark is is pretty dangerously close to maxed out, despite uh, the the moderate damage done by the battle cruiser earlier. Past that, though, Gumio hasn't really bothered. He's been trying his best here to, to max out himself, but completely unaware of the swarm host coming in from the right flank. And the queens are starting to spread the creep. Dark has a tendency to, well, when you say get off my property, to make something his property. As the creep is already spreading forward, enough queens to give the battle cruisers at least a, a bit of trouble here. I think eight or nine of them is more than enough to stall out the battle cruisers from killing the Nidus. How many cruisers now? Up to three. But the swarm host is dropping in more locusts. We're gonna do more economic damage here. Magfield accelerator clones, though. Awkwardly, the mineral wall here might be something that Dark will, uh, Gumiho wants to take out. Blue flame hellbats be very helpful against the locusts on the ground, but this is all essentially free damage. Every moment that goes by, every wave of locusts that Dark is able to get without being challenged back at home is just adding to the value of the swarm house. Fires a Yamato, blasts away the queen. Two more battle cruisers as well. Ah, yes, the queens were on the other side, but Dark has two Nidises here. Is this an escape knight? I don't, um, I, uh, wait, oh! <laughs> Who's flanking who? He knocks down the battle cruiser with the queens. I don't. The locust flying over the top of that weird amount of airspace. The double Nidus able to pop out the queens quick enough to actually outflank the battle cruisers on the ground. Not quite as as user friendly as tactical jump. But Dark turns his Nidus's into effectively a tactical jump for the Queens. And a battle cruiser is brought down by the Queen flank. There's just creep all over the map. This is exactly what I expected from Dark versus Gumiho, which is something unexpected. The battle cruiser's okay. The Knight is swarm host, but this exact scenario. I think Gumiho really needs to take down that mineral wall. It's only helping Dark at this stage. You gotta get down there, you gotta clear this out. But before you can do that, you have to deal with all the roaches in the front here. Some of those warm hoes coming around the wrong side. 
Gumio trying to take a fourth command center, or, or land a fourth command center, rather. The double Nidus while trying to build another one, but it's not quite enough in time. Gumiho slips in. Gonna kill some of these drones. Could really use that plus two weapons to start roasting. Surprise, Dark doesn't have Burrow to save his drones. Which is something kind of unique to his play, but uh, also quite effective and unexpected, especially on those first run by or two when uh, players are not really realizing that, that Burrow is in play. Well, Greater Spire is in production, though I don't believe there are any Locusts quite yet. Not, I mean, there are plenty of Locusts. Uh, corruptors in order to build the Broodlords. As those swarm hosts, Roaches and Ravagers, taking a huge amount of supply, fires off a spray of corrosive bile. Lands it on the command center, but the command center's still going to be intact for now. Plenty of repair. Ooh, the lock on is going to pick off some of the road Ravager. Gumiho is just trying to consolidate his army into something that can finally punch back. And Dark right now, his army is not amazing. If Gumiho is actually able to attack, able to come across the map with the battle cruisers, well, he could be in trouble. As right now, the anti-air is limited to a handful of queens. Yes, they have 2-2. Two, two. And Gumio has not been perfect on his battlecruiser micro. But, oh, a Yamato. And blast the queen away. Chasing down. Oh my god. Finally gonna clear some of this out. But so far, Gumio holding strongly enough. Jimmy, I want to be able to hear what's going on, alright? I need to feel like I'm there. I mean, not too close, but close enough. Also, do I need to hear the beeps and boops every time we want to move our camera drone? Come on! Missile attacks, level 3 done. Those queens have maximum strength, which is mildly annoying to the battlecruisers still. Battlecruisers do have the plus 2 armor. Everything else on the ground, the weapons. Oh, he tried to... He's tried to box out Battlecruisers with the Ravagers. Now, knowing Gumiho, or knowing Dark, rather, he's going to get him. At least one or two of these Battlecruisers are going to be taken out by Corrosive Bow. The Queens are trying to battle here. But the Cruiser's off a of creep. Uh, not easily chased down. Another wave of Locusts. But Gumiho has done a great job of holding the line. This Locust Wave could definitely find some damage. Cyclones helping a bit. Looking to take out the Nidus Network, or Nidus Worm here. Three Infestors on the way. Neural Parasite. If you could borrow some of those Battle Cruisers for just a moment. If you could, if you could Neural Parasite the Battle Cruiser and tactical jump it over your anti-air, you eliminate the cooldowns and you get essentially a free kill. Or, of course, to, to kill the other Battle Cruisers with Yamato Cannon. Which we've seen before. Alright, so Gumiho has established that sensor base. He's only at 44 SCVs as the constant swarm host pressure has brought his worker count to dangerously low levels. But at the same time, that means a huge amount of army supply. He's got 117. He's competitive with Dark, who's maxed out. It doesn't get any better for Dark, who's, who's transferring some of his drones into uh, spine crawlers and spore crawlers in order to free up the supply. But the Ravagers also going to be freed up here. The tanks unseized for the Locusts. The battle cruisers just unloading on everything, adding a huge amount of damage during that fight. And I thought Dark was just trying to get get rid of the Ravagers there, but he builds 27 more roaches behind him. That implies he actually did want them in the first place. Now we're going to have to see the main fight here. The supplies are a little misleading, as uh, the swarm hosts aren't able to participate in too much of the fight. They pop their locust wave, roaches coming in from every angle, Gumio sieges up his tanks. Slight upgrade advantage for Dark, but it's really going to come down to execution. Locust looking to drop on top of the tanks, Gumio holding the line, jumps away a 2 HP battle cruiser, and it will survive. Doesn't jump it far, but going to need a, at least some form of repair here. 12 corruptors. In order, oh, he jumps a battle cruiser into his own anti-air. He grabs one with the neural parasite. 
I'm not sure that helped, though. I think Gooby Ho was considering that idea. Ah, he's saying, well, thank you very much, sir. At least I didn't have to do it myself. And the battle cruiser is going quite deep here. At least one of them on cooldown with that tactical jump. Another one knocked out. He never repaired the other cruiser. And Dark, as so often Dark does, he's on the ropes. He says, somebody, somebody call an ambulance. But not for me. And he turns it around. The infester, it really did. It really did look. Like the tactical jump was a mistake, but instead the infester gave Gumiho a false sense of confidence to pursue the attack. He's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just kill everything. But instead, no, Dark consolidates his entire army. He collapses on the Gumiho. And now the mech army, without those battle cruisers as the backbone, it's a ground army. Even without Vipers here, the Thor count isn't high enough. The Broodlords are drawing a lot. And Broodlords and Locust. He's got the discount army here. Uh, almost everything, he, he slaps a Nidus down right in front. I'm pretty sure that's BM, but who knows the dark. Oh my, what a beautiful and uh, kind of disgusting execution there in every sense of the word. As dark gets the better of Gumiho in game one. Oh, it was so fun to watch, though. I wasn't sure for a moment there. As many times we see with Terran players just building that incredibly cost-effective army. The one thing Gumiho didn't have was ghosts. We didn't actually... The game really didn't go long enough for the uh, later game ghost transition that sometimes we'll see. Uh, as Gumiho was more focused on just the more conventional mech style. But, Dark handles it. A little bit of everything in there. Uh, the Queens, the Ravagers, I, I'm partial. My favorite moment. Jimmy, can we get to the next game so I can do my filler commentary? All right. Um, my favorite moment, of course, the double Nidus Queen flag to kill a battle cruiser. Like, come on. How do you get in... How do you get outflanked by queens? That, well, I guess when they can teleport across the map, they move pretty fast. You know, it, that's one of those moments that I think Terran players watching. I'm just going to take this one. I'm one third Terran myself. Some of my best friends are Terran, so this is not meant to be offensive. That's a lie. It's definitely meant to be somewhat offensive, but... I, I could definitely see Terrans arguing that Zerg having a cross-map teleport that uh, can instantaneously transport some of your units is OP and needs to be nerfed. While watching their battle cruisers die to it, of course, the battle cruisers being a massive capital ship that doesn't even require vision to instantaneously teleport across the map for no cost. But it's another day that ends in Y, so it's a day I uh, must push back on the uh, Terran conglomerate. Otherwise, they're going to revoke my Zerg Cabal card, and uh, I need that in order to win anything. So, Marines... Versus Zerglix. That was actually some really good, really good Marine Micro from, from Gumiho there. To keep them alive. Doesn't quite get the Overlord, unfortunately. But Dark opens up with another pull first. Feels like this is a... Uh, I'm better than you, so I will go for the pull first. This is what Dark used to do. Or at least has done many times against uh, foreign players in GSL. Uh, the non-Korean players come in. We're prepare preparing their macro build, their mechanics, their full series. Dark comes in with like 12 pool. Roach Rush. 2-0. Knock them out. Goodbye. Good night. Um, see you next season, maybe. Or maybe not. He's always been a killer. 
But Gumiho survives just fine. Yes, it could have been a little better, but it definitely could have been worse. A grand total of two Marades and three Zerglings lost. Not that dramatic either way. What are we gonna see this game? Bio from Gumiho, which has always been, well, it's important to mix it up. If you, but Gumiho's bio, it feels like there should be two different ratings or something. They should have like two different MMRs for playing. Now, this is the Terran player's dream is having two equally powerful and viable unit compositions in mech and bio. It, honestly, it's kind of possible right now in, in Terran versus Zerg. Though somewhat map dependent and etc, uh, etc, et yada yada. Um, but if I had to rank Gubio's mech, I'd probably be in the top three. Um, the Zerglings come in. He really wants that Cyclone, but it's not worth it. Yeah, the Cyclone baits him in. But Dark now knows it's going to be about. If, if I, so his mech top... Um, leaving the door open, I think at this point, he knows that Dark wants it. He, Dark's going to go for it. So, gets a few extra Zerglings because of it. Can I finish my sentence, though? I say, talking to myself. Uh, so, top three for me. If, if we were talking about Bio, uh, Marine Medivac, uh, no, well, not top three. Let's put it that way. Uh, probably not top five, either. But, Gumiho's main strength, in my opinion, is his tactics. I know. I know, I know. But I would argue Beyond's tactics are worse than Gumiho. Because Beyond just relies on his sheer precision. His micro just literally flying by the seat of his medevac kind of micro. But Gumiho will prepare at the, and attack the right place at the right time. And this is the way he, he's beaten Sarah with that, even with the marine tank style. He, he knows when and where to attack better than almost anyone. I think some of that does come from playing different unit compositions a lot of the time. So It is very interesting to see the Cyclone here. I'm not actually sure. That that was something I just kind of glossed over. But he has a Cyclone. Maybe just an anti-roach rush option, possibly for sniping off overlords. Doc is showing some roaches here. There's already tanks on the way for Gumiho, though. So he's going to have plenty at home to defend. Dark cut a bunch of drones, or at least he stopped building drones. Ah, yes. You can potentially use the Cyclone Medivac as kind of a ghetto viking. And, of course, has much more uh, utility against ground than a viking uh, when it comes to killing overlords and such. What is that Cyclone looking at? Cyclone turns its uh, face towards whatever target, but it locks its face in that direction uh, If it doesn't start firing Which always makes for some awkward scenarios the immortal and the siege tank also have That ability to look at their target because it takes a bit of time not a lot of time But a bit of time to turn that direction and attack All right, so Gumiho the classic bait and switch Dropping on the right trying to drag units into position Dark. He targets down a queen and then looking to hit on the left. There's not that much here at the moment. There might be an opportunity to. Uh, unfortunately, Gumiho doesn't dive in. There might have been an opportunity. I don't think snipe the hatch, but at least uh, could have taken, put some damage on it. I'm gonna try to knock out. Oh, he's baiting. He's waiting for the. Like, Dark is not gonna fall for that, right? Dark knows. You're not just sending a cyclone. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dark wasn't falling for that. He knew the army was with the cyclone. Wow. Lumio's kept up on supply. And in fact, Dark's upgrades are quite late. He's only now getting 1 1. Gumio just finished both of his. He's already got it finished, so... 
he's going to be able to take very cost-effective fights, and he's kept... What he's done is continually force Dark to make units. He's limited his drone count until very recently. And, uh... Oh, is there enough units here for, for Gumi to actually hold the line, though? The Rogue Ravager. Oh, the Corrosive Bile is hitting multiple tanks. He picks up. Meanwhile, a drop on the other side. Gumio, the idea, very good. The execution, uh, those tanks were just a little too stacked up to get what they needed to get in order to break into that base. But... Eh, I don't think it was a disaster for Gumiho. Dark doesn't have overwhelming army supply right now. He doesn't even have, uh, he doesn't have great upgrades. He doesn't have that many drones. So, wow. He transfuses a drone. This is becoming a trend. At least once a series, he's gonna kind of needlessly transfuse a drone. The fourth they took a lot of damage. Gumio rotates around the tanks in a good spot to siege up to the high ground, but losing Metavax to Corrosive Bile. Dark is starting to really dwindle on supply, though. He's losing so much of his road to Ravager. Gumio is closing in the cost efficiency of that bio army. He finally finished those 1-1 one -one upgrades. Did Dark, and is able to trade a little bit better, but loses the fourth hatchery. Gumio is making real progress here. He just has to be careful not to lose too much to the Ravagers. Oh, he's, well, he's losing some tanks. The Queens are keeping things intact. Gumio bleeding out a few extra units here near the end of it. Goes up another round of Corrosive Bile, please. The amount of air units that Dark hits with Corrosive Bile is just obscene. But, Gumiho, 125 to 143 supply, goes back home. There you go. That's how you know a real Terran's Terran. He's repairing his Metavex. How rare is that? Partially because it's a lot harder to repair Metavex, because if you right-click on Metavex, it just loads the SCV, so it's a little more annoying to do so. Um, and mostly because players just... It's just a bad habit. Yeah, in my opinion, it is a bad habit of Terran players not repairing their Metavex to an almost uh, life-threatening extent. But Gumiho understands the value of repair. It actually sends his Metavex home for it. Uh, which I just appreciate. I appreciate that attention to the detail, that pragmatic play. And he's gonna need it as well. As so far, he's done quite well in keeping Dark busy, keeping his supply down. He's building a sensor tower in the middle of the map. I love it. That sensor tower will give vision of anywhere uh, Dark is moving, make it a lot easier to be efficient with your scans. Dark doesn't know exactly where the army is, but he sees the sensor tower come up. He runs out of position for it, gets caught a bit. Corrosive Biles fired up and will land on nothing as Gumio dodges out of the way. A whole lot of Roach Ravager here, but another bio army from the southern side. Another spray, but Dark is starting to just fray as the Biles are not landing where they need to be. At the end of the day, it looks like Gumiho is going to break through. And the Ravager count is dwindling to almost nothing here. And Gumiho is looking very good. I, okay. I really, I didn't believe. I don't know if you could tell in my somewhat completely unbiased commentary, but I did not believe. Like, I, even at the end, I'm like, how does Dark turn this around? But no. Better upgrades, better positioning, Papa, no, Papa, Papa Gumiho. There it is. Gumiho breaks through with the siege tanks and the well-placed tank placement. Oh my God, that was a horrible sentence. I've said a lot of dumb sentences in, in my time, but that was up there or down there, either direction, out there. Mm, I don't like that. Dark getting straight up beat. I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure 
why he opted for Roach Ravager. Honestly, Roach Ravager against Siege Tank Marine, it is kind of a bullying composition. Dark loves his Ravagers. But that is the counter that Gumio had there. Well executed. And it brings us to game three. We're going to Grusman. Jimmy. Thank you guys for sticking with me. Uh, like and subscribe. Smash that. So, I'm going to give you... This is my... Um, I mean, I think you have to be a little narcissistic to be a YouTuber. Everyone, I have a, well, what is social media but narcissism on an international scale? Uh, but, I digress. I do love seeing, and most of, of the casts and the videos have hit a thousand likes. Where it, where it goes to 1k. Uh, instead of giving, because it feels like when you have that specific number, right? Like, 969, for example. That's a nice number. But see, though, it feels like a milestone. That enough people have have been invested enough in the video. I know. It means nothing. It's uh, it, it, 999, 1,000. But I can't help my monkey brain. Um, it's designed that way. And it's be awesome. It's be awesome. It would be awesome to consistently hit it. And we do. But I, I do appreciate it. And uh, that lets you in a little on the addled mind of someone who casts StarCraft every day. We were going down a, a dark path, but instead, a dark path is the one that's being opened up as Dark works on. The rocks at the bottom of the ramp. For those who have, have, have wondered, can I finish my sentences? Oh god, it's bad today. Back in the olden days, ye olden wings of liberty, um, you could place three pylons or two bunkers at the bottom of the ramp. And this essentially make it near impossible to cost-effectively break out, especially when you started with six workers. Back in the day, in wings of liberty, it didn't even require, at the very start, a supply depot to build a barracks, which means that a two Rex proxy could hit you with two bunkers at the bottom of the ramp. Pretty much by the time you wanted to expand, this is there. Uh, so these unbuildable plates down there are there to block the most egregious of early cheeses. You can still build the pylons on the top of the ramp, but that's what prevents uh, some... What, what was deemed to be just, just imbalanced strategies. Just so ridiculously difficult and cost ineffective to deal with compared to how easy it was to slap three pylons or two bunkers at the bottom of the ramp. Ah yeah, the good old days though, right? Our Terrans could float to the gold base, drop a mule, and fund their entire all-in. Oh. Nowadays I have to use two mules. <laughs> and they no longer mine extra the gold. And I don't... There's only on Royal Blood there are gold bases in the current map pool. But I digress. Cloak Banshee this time around into a bio build. And you know what? The only game Gumiho's won has been with that bio build. So I, I can't knock it here. As Dark, I think getting caught a little off guard by the strength of, of Gumiho's. Did, did he cloak in time? Did he see it? I mean, he doesn't see it now. Oh my god. We just gotta say that this is the first action of the game. Dark! He forgot Spore 20! He didn't watch my guide! How many times? Come on, Dark! Everyone knows Spore 20. And, and Spore Minutes against Protoss. But if you don't get a, a Spore Crawler... Oh, he transfused the... If you don't get a Spore Crawler at 420, quite literally... Oh my god, he transfused another drone. But, if you don't get that spore, you're liable to take critical damage to things like Banshees, Liberators. It's a good basic timing. Uh, and it, it makes the funny number, right? So, uh -huh. 
But 11 drones down, and it definitely could have been worse if Gumiho didn't just lose his Banshee, getting a little greedy there against the Queens as he ran out of energy. Is there a follow-up ready? Couple medevacs, bunch of stim, a regular amount of stim. They are on the way for Dark, who's taking this a little more seriously this time. He's going for the Bane Ling Ness. He's going to go with the conventional Ling Bane, as opposed to trying some silly Roach Ravager strat. But he is double expanding. So if there's one thing he's not ready for, it's a whole bunch of Marines attacking directly. Dark is nearly supply blocked, and he only has... He has 10 Lings. Gumio might not realize it, but if he stims in right now with plus one attack and those stim marines i don't know if there's anything that can stop him he's gonna drop a tank in that nasty position next to the minerals here no banelings on the way dark has no upgrades at all just a greedy start here compounded by the damage the banshee did not expecting the follow-up another tank on the low ground Gumio, I feel like the tanks are doing almost as much damage to the marines as they are to anything else. The queens are going to try to move around, splitting against the tank. They're going to take a lot of damage, but it should be cleaned up here momentarily. One queen, they'll expect one of us in the wreckage, sister! Actually, the queen lives, so it's fine. Despite almost no preparation, Nearly, is it only a token amount of Zerglings? It looks like Dark will hold on for now. Another wave of Siege Tank Marine shows up, though. Mainling speed has begun, but it's a long way from completion. Still that tank on the low ground, firing in quite a... incredible trajectory to get the damage done. But such a nasty position to dislodge. Dark starts 1-1. Gumiho already has plus one weapons completed and will be finishing plus one armor much quicker than Dark with any of his upgrades. Spore Crawler shows up, plopped down right in the center of everything, immediately dies to Marines. Dark on the ropes right now. Gumiho pressing the issue. The Liberators add to the difficulty of dislodging the siege position. Oh, just a disgusting position here from Gumiho. I don't know if there are enough queens to be able to deal with any part of this. He's building four queens at a time because he has the money. He just doesn't really have the units. A counterattack from Dark might be able to cut off some of these reinforcements. Or, you know, just die. He gets a tank. But still, Gumiho pressing in. Dark, it's 1-1. One, one. Up against no upgrade. Still that tank on the low ground. Like I said, Gumiho isn't about the perfect marine micro. He puts himself in a position where he doesn't need to micro. This is... Uh, Dark was not ready for the Banshee, and then he wasn't ready for the Medivac push. Unprepared! Not respecting the Gumi God here. Yeah, the Battle Cruiser play didn't work out, but it's the Bio that seems to be the real ticket here to beating Dark. A last shot as the Banelings roll in. Crash into the siege tanks, which is not an ideal target. 1-1 one, one done seconds after the Banelings are already exhausted. And it looks like, with a commanding bio performance, Dark is going to be beaten by Gumiho 2-1. to one. No, there's no coming. There's no nothing good happening here for Dark. A few more Banelings, but he rolls right past the siege tank on the back line. Just a clean... Solid execution. Gumi Ho. With what I'd call an upset victory. Finds the right timing, the right placement, and slices into Dark's base with a precision tank push in two games. Oh, an entertaining series. We got to see some mech. We got to see Dark dismantle the mech, and then Gumi Ho in a bit of role reversal dismantling Dark with the biotech. Well, thank you for watching. I always like a little role reversal, and if you do too, like and subscribe. Good luck. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Stay chill.